Are you allowing all media in, sir? My photographer just ran over there. Okay, yeah. We'll are, are you allowing all media in, sir? Sir, are you allowing all media in? The tyranny in Leon Valley seems to be never ending. Newly obtained secret emails reveal just how far Police Chief Joseph Agio will go to silence critics and escape accountability. Leon Valley Police arrested and beat up an out-of-town journalist outside of the city council chambers. John Gray was there to report about the city council meeting and provide public testimony. What the? No, out of the way. How come you're letting that media in but not me? Get your hands off me! Get your hands off me! I am not resisting. I am not resisting. Get your hands off me! Put it back. Why is that media allowed in but not me? You're under arrest for obstruction. For what? Are you obstructing? I thought you were letting media no. in. No, no sir. I'm back pushing me. I'm not touching. I'm not pushing. You. Hey, you're breaking my stuff. Get, I am not resisting. Get your hands off me. John was later transported to the emergency room and released with a ticket. He told me that the officers were discussing how they could keep him in the holding cell until after the city council meeting was finished. We have a city council meeting, so unfortunately we have already reached the max capacity of the witness. Oh, You're a witness? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you have anybody that's with you? Um, Will. <laughs> Will? Come with me. Are y'all here for the city? Witness? Witness. John isn't the only one who police have kicked out of a city council meeting. Last year, the city administrators and two of the city council members booted Benny Martinez from the city council. Martinez was critical of the activities at Leon Valley, including Salvaggio's police department. A witness to the proceedings was initially allowed in, but once they realized that she was a witness for Martinez, they quickly ejected her from the building. Apparently, only witnesses for the other side can count as witnesses. Yeah, well, one more. One more? Yeah, one more. Be That'll be her. No, I'm here as a witness. I was here okay, about 15 minutes okay. ago. You haven't been here for 15 minutes. Just hold on just a minute. We're still trying to figure out what we're going to do, okay? He's going to check your bag and I will head and warn you. Yes, sir. I understand that, but we're at capacity already. Okay? Because I was told that I could let two in. There were two ladies who were here before her. Ma'am, I'm not going to argue the I'm not going to argue the point with you. Ma'am? Joe Slavaggio is one of TX Sheepdog 72's most loyal viewers. He obviously has the bell icon set to enable all notifications. He sent an email about the video to Mayor Riley. Mayor, this is one of the auditors we currently have criminal trespassed from Leon Valley. I would like to talk to you when you have a moment. It's my first time, can y'all hear me? Mayor, City Council, thank y'all for staying here for the citizens to speak. My name is Jack Miller. I'm also known as TX Sheepdog on YouTube. Chief McManus came out in a uh, news conference after the conviction of Jesus Padilla for saying many, many, many cuss words at police. Some of those words that he said, I find offensive myself. In fact, I don't associate with him. Uh, I stopped associating with him after that day because of that language. I didn't like it. It was offensive to me, yet he has every right to say it. He was convicted. He didn't have an attorney. He could not afford one. And many people don't know in municipal court with a class C misdemeanor, you're not entitled to an attorney. I would say justice is for sale because he was convicted in minutes. A year later, they have still not been able to get me to trial. I was wrote a ticket. I, I witnessed these officers uh, do some things that, that I thought was wrong. I wanted their name and badge numbers, asked them for it. It's their rules to provide it in a courteous manner. That's what their rules say. They refused. Violating their own rules, as they're getting into their car, I said, badge number matters. And I was wrote a ticket for that and then, on top of that, Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. knowing that that would be dismissed, they turned around and charged me with 13 more counts of disorderly conduct for every word that came out of Jesus Padilla's mouth. At the City of San Antonio meeting, it appears that Sheepdog did not realize that his allotted three minutes was up. It wasn't about the content, but rather the City of San Antonio had to legally allow him only that three minutes. The mayor replied, Dear Chief Joe, thanks for forwarding the YouTube video from last week's City of San Antonio meeting. Although I could not actually hear what Mayor Nirenberg said, 
But it was obvious to me it was related to the auditor's horrible language. That was a no-brainer. The situation at our council meeting involved a counselor's mother's disruptive behavior and not knowing how it started and who was involved sitting 40 yards back. In hindsight, I should have removed any and everyone surrounding the disruption and will not tolerate this in the future. I have learned from this experience. Sincerely, Chris Riley, Mayor. So every council member that registered, it's already on your calendar. I've invited you and most of you have accepted uh, along with the other events that are happening. I'm sorry, excuse me? Was there a comment or a question? Excuse me? Excuse me, excuse me, please. Excuse me. Let's... Okay. I wish somebody would say something to him. He thinks he's very cute, but this affects everybody here. That's not very nice. Is that what they talk to you at home? No manners. Okay. I don't know if wearing the shirt is illegal, but anyway, sorry. All right. So, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I, I don't know if everybody, if, if both of y'all need to leave or one of y'all, I just don't know. I mean, just, no, not for wearing a shirt, just for speaking out. We're not, this is not the time to, to, to speak out at this time. Okay, the manager was finishing up her report. So let's, yeah, yeah, let's, all right. Ms. Kinsler. Mayor, uh, you are what I was following back was up. The mayor asserts that she's going to be very heavy-handed in ejecting someone. Someone can come up to you and cause an issue, or maybe you're just around, not even doing anything, but you're just around there. She says she's going to kick you out. However, Texas Penal Code Section 4205 says that a person commits an offense if, with intent to prevent or disrupt a lawful meeting, procession, or gathering, he obstructs or interferes with the meeting by physical action or verbal utterance. What out-of-control police officers and tyrants tend to ignore is that you must have intent to disrupt for this to be applicable. So it's clear that just because an establishment council member's mother wants to pick a fight doesn't mean that you lose your right to observe and be part of a public meeting. It's a real shame that the mayor won't stand up for the rights of the members of the public and residents of Leon Valley. This next email reveals a lot about Slovagio's mindset. Mayor, I think you misunderstood my reason for sending that to you. My intent was to appeal to you once again that people that don't live in Leon Valley shouldn't be allowed to speak unless they have official business. He doesn't live in San Antonio. He lives in Kirby, yet he feels like he has a right to disrupt the meeting. My request to speak to you has nothing to do with the council meeting or the mother or the agitator of the mother. That's all I wanted to speak to you about changing your mind about letting people from outside of Leon Valley to speak and disrupt your meetings. Respectfully, Chief Slavagio. Initially, I'll mention Slavagio is totally unconcerned about the conduct of the political establishment in Leon Valley. And in typical government dogma fashion, he tries to shift it onto a man for what his shirt said, quote, the agitator. But the meat of this communication is that he has an intent and he is trying to change the mayor's mind to get her to block the right of members of the public to address the Leon Valley City Council. Also, it should be that the city council and the mayor tell the city staff and administrators what to do. The city administrators should not be trying to sway or change the mind of the mayor. And indeed, what Sabaggio is suggesting is illegal. It's criminal activity, criminal behavior. Perhaps he's the real criminal there. The Texas Open Meetings Act requires the city to allow each member of the public to address the body on any or all agenda items before those items are considered or brought up for a vote. Is your family, friends, your neighborhood really going to appreciate what you are doing? I don't think so. People have already spoken, been speaking to you, and you continue to ignore them. And you want to pressure us by putting in somebody that has already pressured the city into a lot of things that we're just very unhappy about. And it's not just a few measly that everybody keeps talking about. It keeps growing. And I'm sorry you don't realize that or you think you can outride this, but citizens, more citizens are becoming 
upset. You're not following the charter that you wrote. Your own words, you're not following it. No intern. Uh, you're just a disgrace now. Thank you for making the city of Leon Valley let's, an unhappy let's, place. Let, yeah, let's not keep, let's not attack. Let's keep it positive. Wow, stay positive. Still, the mayor doesn't get it. The Open Meetings Act also states that the city may not prohibit public criticism of the governmental body. Now, before this, the city manager got up and was trashing the city. I would beg this body to work on improving the quality of the image of Leon Valley. Any applicant that you get that comes in is going to research Leon Valley and they're going, you, you don't, you're not going to get very good reviews. Because of the dysfunctional reputation that this city currently has, it, it's no secret. It was just in the Express News, on a good Express News article yesterday. There's a division up here. Yet as soon as someone tells the real truth that they're all a disgrace, they're immediately shut down. This subsection does not apply to public criticism that is otherwise prohibited by law. Basically, if you can say it on the sidewalk, scratch that. If you can say it on a public sidewalk outside of Leon Valley, then you can say it at the Leon Valley City Council meeting when they've yielded the floor to you. It's your time. And who are they to regulate or censor your public testimony? Councilman Will Bradshaw is about the only person who gets it. And by the way, be sure not to be eating or drinking anything when the former city attorney starts to speak. Okay. Yes, Mr. Bradshaw. I don't understand why the effort, I do understand the reason for this current council, but the effort to limit, continually limit citizens' voices. This happened the last four or five weeks when we went through this 312 hearing. Not every, every meeting I made a motion for allowing citizens to be heard. Every meeting it was denied. Nobody seconded my motion. And now we're trying to limit the number of minutes that people can, can speak. Um, we've had times in the past when citizens have come in and they, they have to explain a problem that was going on, like the towing of vehicles at 4 o'clock in the morning out of their driveway. It's going to take more than two minutes sometimes. And I think, um, in, in general, we've been pretty generous to not strictly enforce the three-minute rule. If somebody's going to come up here and give a 40-minute diatribe, then I understand. But if they take three or four minutes, it's, it's generally okay. And I don't see any reason to, as, as you said, Ms. Alcacer, usually at the end of the meetings, there's no citizens to be heard. They, 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 they just pass. So then why get rid of it? If it's not causing any more time, if something comes up and citizens want to talk about something that happened during the meeting, why not allow them that, that opportunity? Um, another thing, you know, talking about no criticism uh, of staff or council members or anything like that, um, this Texas Senate just passed HB 2840, which we're talking about goes into effect on September 1st. And not only does it require councils to allow citizens to be heard at the beginning and during um, agenda items. It also says in Part E, a governmental body may not prohibit public criticism of the governmental body, including criticism of any act, omission, policy, procedure, program, or service. Um, I myself have been the subject of criticism from some members of, this, uh, of the citizens and that's fine with me. That's their, their right. That's their constitutional right. If they want to criticize me for something that I've said or done, and I will take okay. it. And I think we should not be so thin-skinned to try and prohibit people from voicing their opinions. And I just, one more, Mayor. I just okay. wanted to clarify on what uh, Council, Councilor Bradshaw was saying about the House bill. Um, it does talk about uh, allowing citizens to be heard, but it doesn't allow, it doesn't give permission to make personal attacks on any of the, it just says the governmental body you can criticize, of course, because that's the First Amendment constitutional right, you can criticize your government, but it doesn't say that you're allowed to critic, personal, make personal attacks upon staff or any council member that's not germane to the subject. So I, I disagree with, where, with where that Where does part. it say that? It, it does well, it say doesn't, it, this, well, you just read it. Right, I just read it. The, the, the part that I didn't read, if I, if I may, yeah. sorry. Sure. Um, says, this subsection does not apply to public criticism that is otherwise prohibited by law. So if it's prohibited by law, then I agree. Threats, 
vulgarity, stuff like that, of course. But mm -hmm. if they're criticizing um, a governmental body, including criticism of an act, omission, policy, procedure, program, or service, I, if they want to come and talk about but those aren't public works or something, then not criticize public works. Personal attacks. So, in my opinion, the way that law reads, it's, it doesn't count what as if personal it, what attacks. If it, what if they had an issue with an officer in our law and they call the officer out by name? Is that you're saying that's not allowed? If that officer, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if if they have a problem with uh, whatever the officer did as a part of its governmental function or as a part of its governmental duty, they have a right to criticize that. But to personally attack somebody for whatever they did, that's that they're not giving them permission to do that, in my opinion, of that House bill. So uh, we can have a difference of opinion, but... I, I, I understand. And I'm, I just would like to say it's a very slippery slope when you start telling people what they can and cannot say. Mm -hmm. But I about first amendment. Excuse me, just a second, please, Ms. Charles. I'm going to call on Ms. Rodriguez, and then I'll call on you, Ms. Charles. Well, um, Mr. Bradshaw, I do agree with you about being thick-skinned. You also have to remember that some people get harassed or personally attacked more than others, and it has nothing to do with thick skin, and it does not have anything to do with. It has to do with the person and not with the act that they've committed. I, um, and it's happened quite a few times where individuals have come up during citizens to be heard and personally attacked, well, some of us. Um, and that's not solving the problem. Getting into a he said, she said, or I don't like you because of this, that, or the other, that's not solving the problem. There's no room for personal attacks whether the elected member is liked or not liked. We're here to do a job, and it should stick with the parameters of doing the job, not calling out a person just because you don't like their attitude or the way they dress or the way they carry themselves. And I was the one that brought this issue up for that very uh, specific reason because it has nothing to do, again, with people complaining. I have no problem with people complaining. If they don't like me, that's, that's just fine. But that has nothing to do with my ability to do my job or how I've done my job. Those are two very distinct things, and that's why I brought this up because I think it needs to be addressed. Seeing as how I come from a family of law enforcement, Leon Valley charged me $453 for the set of emails that included what I just showed you. And I'd like to thank Dennis, Timothy, Jason, Shane, Robert, and Anonymous for your support and assistance in keeping this fight going. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. If you'd like to help with my efforts to reform out of control tyrants and reveal their secret communications and activities, the things they don't want to be brought to light, Please consider making a donation of $5 or more using PayPal or Patreon. The links are in the video description. I have shocking new updates about Savaggio's war on the First Amendment auditors. Those updates will be coming soon on this channel, so be sure to enable all notifications and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will join me in standing up against tyranny and advancing liberty.